of in the golden age of art in a way because any artist at any level at any age can be tutored by any artist that they want. So I'm Britt and I'm here with freelance illustrator Lauren Walsh. I found you through Instagram. I like stumbled upon your art and like your color palettes and form really like drew me in and like really show like true like technique and skill. I just really enjoy how you create. So I'm curious like how you got started in art. Um, I mean, it's kind of like one of those things where you just start drawing and then people like, they point you out and they go, yeah. oh wait, you have a talent and all of a sudden you're doing this thing and you're painting and you don't really know what you're doing. Um, but like, I was like obsessed with dinosaurs when I was little. All so right. I would draw dinosaurs under my um, my desk table and like, like a little yeah. like, like Sistine Chapel. Um, and then like, eventually my parents were like, we should probably do something and get her some education in art. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I actually ended up uh, getting lessons from this guy. His name is Nico Ciccelli, and he's a master painter. So he does like all old master style paintings. Nice. So I think a lot of my style has kind of come from that. Yeah. That, like, I pull a lot of inspiration from old master paintings. So. That's, I can yeah. definitely like see that because it yeah. has like, a uh, painterly vibe, but I also feel like it has some of the like strong shape of almost like comic art, which is kind of like more of like my vein of Yeah, which is art. exactly the two things that I'm obsessed with. So it's like- That's <laughs> awesome. So I always love it when people see that and I'm like, well, I'm really into anime. Like yeah. I'm really into like American comics. I'm really into just like, you know, old paintings. And I'm like, so yeah. glad that people can see that, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. Like, I, I yeah. love that, like, combination of things that are kind of, that, like, initially would seem like they're kind of, like, on polar sides of the, like, art spectrum. Yeah, yeah. It's, and you kind of always find that, like, that's where you find your style very often or something that's new or unique to you is, like, that in-between of something, like, between all of your interests. Yeah. I guess that's what describe it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. <laughs> and you have a pretty impressive, or at least in my eyes, Instagram presence. Thank so <laughs> what kind of got you like started there? Um, so funny enough, it was actually the 2016 election. Okay. Because it was one of those moments where you literally saw the beast of social media completely oh. exposed for the first time. And you were like, whoa, like what's happening here? Like, cause like we were all kind of in this position where it was like, we didn't really understand how social media worked. At least the public didn't, I don't think, yeah. right? I see that. And then all of a sudden you're like, wait, everyone's getting a tailored feed. Like you're getting a tailored feed yeah. that's different from mine. Like, and then from that, I just was like obsessed and then really started going down that route and like, that's kind of where I started shifting from an artist to an illustrator, and I started thinking more about um, the viewer as opposed to what I wanted to do. Okay. So I started thinking about Instagram as a client, and like oh. the following is a client, and like yeah. so I actually started researching who I wanted to follow me, and like was like, what do they like? Like, do they want? What type of accounts do they follow? what do those counts have in common? Yeah. And like, that's where the marketing side took over, like of my yeah. mind. And I was like, analytics, I'm gonna analyze everything. And yeah, so. <laughs> that's awesome. I yeah. love, I, that, that's definitely like a new perspective that I heard um, on like finding a social media presence. Yeah. That's yeah. really awesome. Cause you're like searching for who you want to find you versus mm -hmm. kind of just like tossing a net out and like whoever comes. Yeah, and like all the, <sighs> If you Google like how to find, how to create a following, you're gonna get the worst advice yeah. you could possibly be given. Like go follow other people and go like True. other people's stuff. And it's like, yeah, but at what point do you become a spam bot? And at what yeah. point do you like, like, cause the whole, well, okay. Right now, okay. The way it's, the way it's kind of designed is that like, they want you to create a community. Okay. Right. So they want you to like have engagement. Engagement's number one. So yeah. like if you have engagement from like multiple people, consistent people, the algorithm kind of tends to favor you because they're like, We know that we know that this is tried and true quality content. So we will yeah. push this for you. Um, 
So yeah, it's that's kind of how the following happened. Being genuine, you know, like being who you are and not just like, hey everyone, buy my stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you, like no, I want to get to know you. I want to give you something that you'll enjoy and you know say thank you to people like yeah you know, they're giving you your time to like look at your art and be like please thank you like uh, thank you for appreciating me and following me yeah and all that kind of stuff so there's some tips for creating a following <laughs> that's great i love yeah. that i think that's like such great advice because um like freelancers and entrepreneurs tend to kind of like struggle with the marketing side of things yeah and you really have and that has to be part of your like you are a small business right? yeah so you have to be both ceo social media coordinator you have to be marketer you have to be everything you have to be your own package designer you know yeah like how if someone buys a print of yours how are you going to package it so that the experience of your instagram is carried over into the package i mean like this is where like the graphic design side of me comes out because then it's like how do you design something that insinuates quality yeah right? yeah. yeah so that's very real. Did you study graphic design? No, I'm just obsessed with it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I actually did all fine art at Penn State. That was oh, cool. where I went. But my dad's a salesman, so it was going to bleed over eventually. Yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so I know that's something that we oh, talked cool. about when um, we were like, messaging each other. You were saying how you like to grow your audience organically. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I'm kind of like curious about why you choose to do it that way. Um, well, for one, like, and this is like the current state of things, because everything does change pretty quickly. Um, if you have an organically grown following, they're more likely to actually want to engage with you. Yeah. And you're creating this, like, you're creating, again, it's a community. So you're going back to that community element. And um, if you're paying for likes, like by putting an ad out there it's it's kind of just putting it out there and then you kind of get a like or two and then you're like oh i just spent 10 bucks on that like yeah know? so it's it's actually what's happening right now on twitter with the quote-unquote woke tweets okay right and yeah. they're like they're it's like the wendy's tweets like oh wendy is so fire right now like yeah. that whole thing and you're like no it's actually a marketing yeah. to make you feel like you're engaging with a corporation. So in that sense, it's been successful right now until people I think like kind of get connected. Like they're like, wait, like I know that Wendy's, like Mr. Wendy is not like responding to me directly, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> um, so that's where the organic side comes out of it where it's like, um, it was the whole thing with Keurig like a while back where like everyone was like getting freaked out and they're like, crushing their Keurigs, but it was free marketing for them. It was, uh, it was like a whole thing. This is like 2016, it was a blur for everybody. Well, that's true, that's <laughs> yeah. a fact. Everyone like fled Instagram, like everyone fled social media and they were yeah. like, I'm gonna go to the woods, like you guys handle this. Yeah. Like, um, but it was like a whole thing with like Sean Hannity and people were trying to like pull their ads because he said some stuff. And it, you know, it was like that kind of thing. Okay, yeah. And then, and then, like, of course, like everyone who was like, like Sean Hannityers, were like, <laughs> they're like, we're gonna destroy our Keurigs because like they're pulling their ads, and we're gonna. We're, oh, okay. And it was so that it's whole the same thing. thing with like the Nike shoes. And... Yes, it's exactly that. Yeah. Meanwhile, they just got free marketing. That's true. Like it's all, and they didn't have to pay anyone for it. It was yeah. just like because good press is good or bad press is still press. So it's like that's kind of a thing that's happening right now. This has nothing to do with organic reach on Instagram, but I'm like on a tangent. <laughs> everything connects to everything. I yeah, mean, it's social media. Yeah. It's, it's a social, like... It's yeah, all yeah. very interesting to me. Oh, it's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, well, yeah, it's a... Yeah. I can honestly go on about it for hours. Like, then it gets into, like, Maybe weird stuff. Maybe need to start a podcast. I should. Because, <laughs> like, it always starts with, like, Instagram and then slowly turns into the singularity yeah. somehow. And all of a sudden, like, the robots are taking over and you're like, wait, where did you go? Like, how did... <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. That's exactly it. Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, organic reach is going to be people that will actually engage with you. You want to create fans not necessarily just followers. Yeah. Because like a fan versus a follower, a follower will like your stuff and just kind of 
pass through. Yeah, and they'll be like, oh, that's cute, and then they move on, right? Yeah. Whereas a fan will actually go out and buy your work and will actually want to support you. Yeah. And if you're a freelancer, that's kind of what you want. And like, yes, the reach in general, like, is good for finding work, but having a fan base is what will help you survive long term. Yeah. Because um, I have a uh, family friend of mine, he, I don't know if I'm allowed to say who he is, but he essentially created something that has a cult following. And okay. he, he moved out here, he was in LA, and then he moved out here. And um, I kind of learned that from him. Like, he took me to New York Comic Con, and like, I got to see the back workings of that at a young age. Yeah. And like, what I realized is that him being older, it's his fan base that's kept him like thriving all this time. Not yeah. necessarily just like viewers, it was the fans that are keeping him yeah. like, going. So, yeah. And I think that's great, like, because the connection that you have and the consistency that you have with like posting definitely mm -hmm. keeps engagement and um, I like how you were like doing a Q&A like, yeah, a few yeah. weeks ago which <laughs> I feel like I actually don't see that often like on Instagram stories from artists mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so yeah I think that keeping up with that does exactly what you're talking about where it's like people feel that connection and I'm sure yeah. that helps with things like Patreon oh yeah yeah I'm Which, still working my Patreon, yeah. <laughs> like, because Patreon's one of those things where it's like, you want people, like, you need to create the content for people to want to support you on Patreon, but you also yeah. need enough people backing you to even warrant spending the time to create a Patreon, so it's like, it's yeah. kind of weird in between where you have to make it before they come, and just keep creating before yeah. they come, so, yeah, but Patreon's, Patreon's an interesting thing, um, and yeah. it's, there's a lot of creators out there who are doing fantastic stuff on there. So. That's true. Yeah. I'm very intrigued by that, especially the like tier system for mm -hmm. uh, like the people that subscribe. Mm -hmm. I'm very curious about how people kind of balance um, how much money someone contributes to what they get in return. Yeah. So yeah. like, do you like how do you kind of like figure out what seems equal to give out for what they're giving? I mean, that's. That's a million dollar question right there. <laughs> like, um, I think personally, I know what Patreons I support. So I know that like for me, I'll subscribe to people for their, their works in progress. Um, there's certain like people out there where I'll pay extra for their tutorials. Right? Yeah. And like we're kind of in an in, we're kind of in the golden age of art in a way, because any artist at any level at any age can be tutored by any artist that they want. Yeah. Because essentially every artist has their own tutorial package. And every yeah. artist out there has their own style. And like, if you like one person, you can get a tutorial from them. And if someone likes me, they can get a tutorial from me. Yeah. You get to like so, shop teachers. Pretty much, yeah. And, and you're not limited now by just your teacher in high school. Right? Yeah. You you can go to anyone you want and be educated by them. Yeah, and you can do so. it at any point in time. You don't have yeah. to wait for a class to come through or yeah. wait till you go to college or wait till you're out of college or when you have time. Yeah. Like it's just accessible mm -hmm. immediately. Oh yeah. yeah. And for, I mean, for me, I quite honestly didn't really start learning how to draw and paint until after I graduated college. Because like wow. I, because for me, like, there's this whole thing about talent versus learned skill, right? Yeah. And, like, for me, I was always talented. But the problem with talent is that, like, it's lazy. Yeah. And, it, and it's, like, you... you get comfortable. And, yes. That's yeah. exactly it. And then you're, like... And then when it becomes hard, you're, like, but it's supposed to be easy. And I'm, I'm just yeah. going to go now. <laughs> and then you just kind of, like, leave. Um, and then it wasn't until after college that I was like, no, this is something I want to learn how to do. I need to put myself in an uncomfortable position and start to teach myself how to do things. So yeah. I actually didn't start painting until probably a year ago, which like, wow. I know it's like, oh wow, that's such a short period of time, but it's like, I also had high level of drawing skill. So it was like, just, a flip. Yeah, and just learning color and color theory and yes, and doing that. Which, I really—that's like, <laughs> one thing that I really like to talk about. Yeah, and I 
find the colors and you're painting blushes. I was literally just saying, like, it looks like a popsicle and, like, I want to eat it. <laughs> so, I know someone described it as creamy the other day. And I was like, creamy? That's actually, so, like, like, I literally said it's like creamsicle. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so weird to me. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's, <laughs> some of us relate to color that way. and Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely, I'm glad to know I wasn't alone on that. Because I'm oh, like. No. Oh no, 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 no. Everyone's like, oh, it's so creamy and it's so, like, I it's guess luscious. Yeah. 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 It's, yeah. It's, it's interesting. I don't know. So, how do you kind of come across, like, color pairings that you like and kind of, like, get the mood across? So, I actually have, like, a whole Pinterest board of just color palettes. Yeah. Like, I will go out there. If I like a painting, I'm like, color palette, color palette, color palette. And, like, I'm, I'm attracted to purples and blues a lot. I see that. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, and there's every so often I'll go in my Instagram and I'll be like, if you do one more painting with purple and blue, I swear to God, I'm gonna freak yeah. out. <laughs> it's a lot. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of like where I collect things. And a lot of times it's like pushing myself to use a different color palette that maybe I yeah. haven't done before. Um, and yeah, and I, like, I, I kind of, I'm getting into that point where I'm like, I kind of want to start, um, like I, I'm trying to push myself constantly. So I'm like trying to push myself more towards storytelling with color. So like really thinking about like, what colors are you using? Does that reflect something on the story you're creating? Like if it's a sad painting and you paint it in orange, is that supposed to make you feel this like tension? Cause like orange yeah. is supposed to be happy, right? And then it's a sad painting in orange. Yeah. And then you're like, well, there's weird tension here and I don't know why. Yeah. Like, that kind of thing. So. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I'm trying to do right now. Because I was listening. Do you know who Jen Bartell is? She, Jen? Jen Bartell. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. So she, like, she does, like, all, like, the cover art, like, right yes, now for Marvel yeah. and stuff. Yeah. She's doing the sneakers. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. She's killing the game right now. Um, but she had a great podcast um, called Off Panel. On, well, she was hosting on Off Panel. And she brought up a good point about, like, portfolios, where a lot of people have floating heads in their mm, portfolios yeah and i was listening to it and i looked at my instagram and i went that's a lot of floating heads in my instagram like i'm kind of yeah. screwed <laughs> like, so i'm like trying to like make myself like create environments for my yeah. characters now so it's it's I hard. feel that. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's a phase of like every artist, the floating heads. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. You like nail like, facial anatomy and you're like, I know how to do this. Yeah. I'll just do it all the time. Yeah. Listen, look at me, I'm Michelangelo, I can do a face. Like Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. just it's it's really satisfying too, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, so. also faces, like, if we'll get into like the strategy of Instagram, there's a reason why every fa like every influencer and Instagram model has their face front and center. It's because like we as humans automatically like we create faces in everything, right? Yeah. So like if we see a face in our feed, it will make you stop because there's a face there. Yeah. And like if you just see like a landscape, it's easy to kind of just like pass yeah. through. But if if there's a face there, you're immediately drawn that to it. That makes total sense. Oh yeah. So it's like the face like it helps, but it's also like, you know, you can't just keep doing faces, so. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. But I'm trying. I don't know if you saw my most recent one I did with like little, the lady and she's like, oh, got her yeah, arms the up. like yeah. line art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I'm like trying to do more of that yeah. kind of stuff. Cause yeah. You I also have... mentioned in the Q and A about um, combining references to kind of like create a unique piece, which yep. I think is literally an art in and of itself. Cause you see a yeah. lot of people going straight from a specific reference image, yeah. which I think is like very, people create a lot of like beautiful things from that too, but being able mm -hmm. to combine references is mm -hmm. very impressive. Uh, well, I mean, it's crucial too. I mean, cause like there comes a certain point where if you're just copying a picture you found on Pinterest, yeah. you're kind of committing copyright infringement, kind yeah. of, but not. Like, it's this gray weird gray area. Yeah. yeah. And, like, um, I don't know if you saw the whole, like, controversy that Ross Straws had, you know, I did. Yeah. yeah. Where, like, he was doing photo bashing and everyone, like, freaked out on him. And it's like, yeah, like, he should have given, cre given credit yeah. to the model, but, like, it's also his art and it's like it's a weird gray area yeah especially so. when you put like because he does something very unique to his art where you couldn't necessarily tell exactly where, where it came, it came from, from. Mm -hmm. so it's kind of like 
where do you go with that? Even though I think yeah. you can never go wrong with giving credit. So. Oh God, no, no. Yeah. And then there's like, you know, um, and, and this is actually something that like, I'm sure he kind of felt and I'm kind of feeling too, is that like, I had to draw this in your style where I like forgot to like tag a girl. Oh. And I, I literally like was like busy. I'm like, just post it on for Twitter yeah. and just let's go, let's go, like keep going. Yeah. And then I, all of a sudden, like she was really mad. And then I was like, I'm sorry, like I'm human. I made a mistake, yeah. you know? But then I, I just, yeah. that experience made me realize I'm like, oh my God, like now I have like a small following and now all of a sudden my standard I have to maintain is so much higher. Yeah. And it was kind of overwhelming. So like in a way I kind of, I'm empathetic towards him because I was like, you know, I get it, you know, yeah. <laughs> like not, maybe not on the level that he's at, but like, I get it, dude. And I'm like, oh, that sucks. Like you make one mistake and everyone's like, Rah! like for real, it's the intense. internet likes to dog pile. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. I feel like yeah. especially Twitter. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Well, Twitter's, uh, Twitter's an interesting place. <laughs> is that like, do you find that that is a good place for art as well? Or is Instagram more favorable? So. I would, if you had asked me a year ago, I would have said that Twitter was like nothing, right? Um, turns out it's not. Um, I actually have gotten more freelance work through Twitter than through Instagram. Wow. I don't know why, but that's just what's happening. And I think it's like partly like, like, um, like art directors, first of all, they're on multiple platforms. Mm. So like, you want to be on Behance and ArtStation, LinkedIn, Instagram, like pretty much you want to be on everything. Yeah. Because you don't know where that art director is going to go look for stuff. Yeah. Um, and I've just seen more people, I've just seen, I've gotten, I've received more requests through, uh, through Twitter than through Instagram. I think Instagram is more of a public consumption yes. site. It's more kind of yeah. like voyeuristic. That's like yeah. the first thing that yeah. yeah. Whereas Twitter has the, this this um, perception that you can speak to anybody and yeah. like you can talk to anybody. So yeah, so I'm, I, maybe that's why it is, but I would highly suggest getting a Twitter uh, for sure. Uh, especially like with where Instagram might be going, like, like they're gonna be removing likes soon yeah. so like and and i was saying this to someone else today i was like you know you have to like have a diverse portfolio across multiple platforms because you never know when one might just tank mm. and like that i mean that's what happened with facebook everyone left facebook yeah and now everyone's on instagram but in my opinion mark zuckerberg um if you grip it too much people will jump somewhere yeah. else i mean there's so many different places that like the public can jump to and yeah. make their new home. So, yeah. So, like, mm. what do you think are the differences between the algorithm on Twitter versus Instagram? Twitter, to be quite honest, sometimes Twitter feels like the Wild West and like you're just riding a, bon a Bronco and you're just like, where is this going? I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I do feel like a little bit of Twitter is like, it's about the following to help you burst out of that of the like of that algorithm okay. which is kind of the same thing with instagram um twitter is still kind of a new space for me like i'm like kind of still figuring it out um but i think it's a little bit more time-based and like and i th i think they've also pulled some of that like engagement too like retweets mm. are better than likes 100 percent true um and that's also because it can get you out on different like platforms yeah. like, uh, not different platforms but different feeds for other people mm. that Maybe they didn't that's see you true. before. You get to, that is so true. You get to yeah. branch out and reach more people on Twitter, probably more than anywhere except for maybe yeah. Tumblr. But even Tumblr's dead, though. Yeah. Like that's true. Yeah, like Tumblr. I I don't know. Does Yahoo bought it? Is that? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. There are t Tumblr. I just haven't been on Tumblr. Like, did you ever use it for your art? For a little bit. I actually had a couple that like tumbled a lot. I guess is that the yeah. term? I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I had that. I, I did Tumblr for a little bit. I just never created a community there, and I think like partly just like the system was weird. Mm. Like, like you didn't really know who was replying to your stuff and when. Yeah. And like at least with Twitter, you know exactly when you're getting yeah. a response, and you can create that engagement through with them. So. Yeah. Yeah, but um, the like hashtags you use on Twitter actually do matter. 
Okay. Like, it's not like with Instagram where you kind of feel like you're putting these these hashtags out and you're like, I guess someone will like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know, like that kind of thing. Um, but then there's like also like other things with Twitter, like threads. Like, I think the thing about Twitter, you have to be active. Like, you have to be out there it, getting into threads and sharing your art. But then like right now, the art community on Twitter is kind of oversaturated with these art shared threads. Okay. And like, it's kind of, like at first it was cool and now it's like, all right, everyone's doing too much. Like you can't do an art share thread every day. Yeah. Like it's too much. So is that when people kind of dump all they've been creating or? Essentially like the art shares are like, someone will tweet something out and be like, it's share your art Monday, share your art in the comments. And then oh, everyone okay. goes out and shares their stuff. Um, but then there gets like a certain part where like, if it's the same people following you and the same people sharing it, like it's not interesting anymore because you're not seeing new content in them. Okay. Um, but yeah, and, and like Twitter is like a bunch of threads, which I was like, what? That's yeah. Me. Like, yeah. That is like the whole different thing, which yeah, yeah. And I it's think like, has great element. Oh yeah. 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 I, I think personally, I think that that's like it's gonna grow in popularity. I think in time. So. Do you think more people are going to transition to Twitter than Instagram? Or? I think if tw if Instagram goes the route of Facebook, yes. Okay. If if Instagram starts getting too, um, like it's, it's kind of already happening. Like yeah. even Instagram feels tailored now, where you're like, I want to see more interesting content out there, and like with Twitter, I feel visually stimulated because I'm like mm. going through and I'm seeing all this different stuff. Because you're not just seeing what you follow, but yeah. What the people you follow what to what they put yeah, out exactly. from and, other people. And it's like it's like Pinterest where you can go down this weird rabbit yeah. hole and then it's 4 a.m. and then you're like, why am I looking at recipes for cats? Yeah. I don't understand. Like, yeah. <laughs> Pinterest so, will never die. No, <laughs> Pinterest will never die. Oh my God, no. Especially for artists, it's way too good of a reason. Oh, if they, if, if Pinterest closes, all of my reference photos are gone. Like, yeah. oh, everything's gone, so. That's apocalyptic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's very like very girly artsy place, I guess. Like <laughs> Just as like a bonus thing, because when I was reading through your Patreon, I saw that you said that you basically like want to be Bob Ross. Yeah. You want to like become Bob Ross. I love him. So like, who are your biggest art inspirations? Um, I think well, a Bob Ross because of his attitude. Like that's you know like I want that positive vibe being put out there like him. Um. Let's see, right now I'm really loving, well, Loish. I mean, she's yeah. always number one. Like, I remember her from Tumblr back in the day. I was That's like, impressive. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. I mean, Alphonse Mucha for me is, or Mucha, I guess. Uh, obviously, he's a huge influence for a lot of people. Um, I love just kind of like going to art museums and yeah. just like looking at like, that golden era of illustration where it's just like these gorgeous paintings that are telling a whole story and like really getting in there even though sometimes security yells at me for getting too close <laughs> but that's besides the point like <laughs> it's the passion it literally just oh, like yeah. draws you in I, I was i was actually here at the art museum and i was looking at a van gogh and i was like i was really getting in there i was yeah. like he did what with the brush like it's it incredible oh it's amazing and this woman's like ma'am Back off! And I'm like, oh, thanks. I'm studying the paintings. It's very interesting for me. Yeah. <laughs> like, like my first yeah. time coming to the art museum after I had really like become an artist, like for myself, mm. I almost cried like looking at one of the paintings. So I was like, they did that with oh, yeah. brushes, <laughs> yeah. like, and they were a person just like me. But like, how yeah. did they do that? Like, I could never. Like, I don't. Uh, it's just like. Yeah. I became this like really, uh, I don't even know what the word is, like eclectic art person in like a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know I had it in You're like, hey, are you okay? And you're like, it's just so beautiful. Yeah, like, it's I like, can't. it's a tree, but like, <laughs> it has so much emotion. Yeah. I, I mean, I always try to make like a pilgrimage to the Met and the MoMA oh. and like really just like, just walk through and like study stuff. I want to go to the Whitney Vinyl this okay. year. So, um, because I've actually never been to the Whitney, and like, 
I've always, it's just like one of those, I mean, there's all this like weird controversy happening this year, but like what, when is there not controversy now? But anyway, once again, not geez. sure about that, but. Yeah, anyway, sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't even know. The, the, the CEO, one of the board members is the CEO of a place that has tear gas and tear gas was used in Puerto Rico and then he stepped down and I'm like, what? What's happening? Like, I don't wow. understand. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, like I want to go to that, and like yeah. it's like it's about like re nourishing your creative spirit. Yeah. So. yeah. so like, what do you kind of do to? I'm about to wrap this up. This is my yeah. last question. <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> what do you kind of do to like keep yourself stimulated creatively? Uh, take naps. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, dreams can help. You never know what will come. Um, a lot of it, like, is collecting things, like, um just around me yeah the other thing too is like not listening to my head like actually just like creating something to create something yeah like yeah throw a fish in there who cares you know what I mean like yeah and and not letting because I have a very not critical but I have a very um particular an editing eye okay yeah can sometimes flip too much on myself and be like, no, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. Yeah. And then like walking away from it and then sleeping and then looking at it. Yeah. And then like the next morning I'm like, that's pretty dope. No, that's good. That's, that's true. Good. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. definitely relate to that. Yeah. And like, and, and not getting too stuck in the, that flow and mm. like. We're kind of doing the same thing. Yeah, because like if you get stuck in the flow, I don't really think at that point you're making decisions. You're kind of, you're letting your body take over. Okay. And then like you'll like look up and all of a sudden the face is like over yeah. here. And you, and it's like one of those, it's like, um, it's like running where if you run without thinking, you can actually injure yourself. Okay. But if you run with purpose and making sure that like yeah, your technique. position is in the right spot, yeah. you will be able to run further and longer. Um, so it's I like that. Perfect. I really like that analogy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Running is great yeah. for your mental clarity, everybody. <laughs> That's awesome. That's another great tip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exercise it out, sleep it out, whatever you got to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you have anything that you want to plug? Or <laughs> uh, I guess... Well, it's Lauren Walsh art on everything, so. <laughs> yeah, we um, talked a lot about that, so. Yeah. You can see it in action now. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, and uh, that's really it. And also just uh, be kind to yourself and be your, be your best fan out there and support yourself as much as you can. Yeah. yeah. And check out our Patreon. <laughs> yeah, check out my Patreon. We want to support artists. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, thanks for talking to yeah. us. This went above and beyond, honestly. I'm like <laughs> so pumped. I love this talking about this stuff. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> you should start a YouTube channel or something. I yeah. probably should. Yeah. I'd love like, to yeah. More. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, maybe I will. Yeah. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, you can subscribe for more marketing and business related content. Sometimes we talk to artists like here, or a variety of different people. Just check out the channel and subscribe for more. <laughs>